Welcome to Firearms Friday from the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne. My name is Evan Green. I'm the firearms historian here at the museum. And if you're wondering if it's Firearms Friday, where are the guns? Well, I want to take advantage of this opportunity to uh, respond to some comments that were made on previous videos and to talk about a few things that have been in the news lately. Uh, in addition to my volunteer work here at the museum, I am also an NRA certified instructor for basic pistol and personal protection in the home. And in conjunction with a, a team of other instructors um, and through the offices of Larimer County Community College and the Larimer County Sheriff's Department, we teach those classes uh, four or five times a year. So, um, at a previous video, I had mentioned that um, uh, we check the firearms uh, when we take them out of the rack and we check them again before we put them away. And one of the commenters said, well, are you, are you uh, afraid that somebody's going to come in and load that gun while you're not looking? And I said, no, uh, that's probably unlikely, but we want to establish uh, protocols for safe firearms handling and set a good example for the people who watch these videos. So to talk for a minute about the firearms in the collection, we have about 300 firearms, uh, long guns and handguns. They are kept in a locked vault and inside the vault, the handguns are kept in a locked cabinet inside the locked vault. And when the building here is not occupied uh, there's a double alarm system for our vault and for the building itself so the point of that i think is that that firearms owners whether it's a museum with 300 guns or an individual that has a, a one or two owners are responsible for seeing that those firearms are secured and are not accessible to unauthorized persons it's just a sad, sad story that we hear too often about a, a toddler who finds a loaded gun and uh, kills himself or shoots himself or shoots a playmate or, or a member of his family. And that those terrible instances could be prevented if the firearm owner was responsible. And I understand that uh, you need to have, if you feel you need, as I do, to have a firearm for personal protection and for protection of my home, um, they're going to be loaded and they're going to be ready to use. But there are handgun, small handgun safes that you can keep a handgun in and it's accessible sometimes with a key, sometimes with a keypad, sometimes with a fingerprint and it's uh, available instantly, but prevents unauthorized people from, from accessing those firearms. Uh, I had an incident, this is years ago, uh, when my son was in elementary school, after school, he and his buddy would go to a neighbor's house to be uh, attended to till uh, my wife and I were home from work. And they didn't like going there because the mother would not allow them to bring toy guns nor to play gun games. Well, her house, her rules, that's fine. Several years later, uh, after we'd moved uh, to a different neighborhood, I was riding back past that area and saw the husband out doing some yard work. And by this time, he had a, a boy who was probably five or six years old who was playing in the driveway with a friend of about the same age. So I stopped to chat with the husband and realized that this other little boy had a 22 revolver, a real gun in a holster. So um, I took it away from him and uh, it was not loaded, fortunately, but uh, marched him back across the street to his house and uh, was expecting his mother to be horrified. She was really blasé about the whole thing. Oh, well, give me that. I'm going to shut the door in my face. So. Could have, been, could have been a disaster. And when I told my son about it, he said, well, if she'd let us play with toy guns, maybe they'd have recognized a real one when they saw it. But again, as a, as a responsible gun owner, you need to make sure that these firearms are not available to unauthorized persons. 
The other, the other thing that, that we, I want to talk about a little bit is about handling firearms. And the guy who said, well, do you think somebody was going to sneak in and load that gun? Uh, no, I don't believe that. But if, you ha if you're going to hand me a firearm, you need to open the action, open the cylinder, show me, show your, check for yourself that that firearm is unloaded. And even though I've seen you do that, if you hand me that gun, I'm going to check it again. And if we close the action, talk about the firearm, how, what's neat, what's not, what's good about it, before I hand that back to you, I'm going to open that action and make sure that it's unloaded, even though it's been checked at that point two or three times. And when I hand it back to you, I would expect you to open that action and check it again before you put it away or put it back in your holster or, or whatever. So. Again, uh, when we do our firearms classes, we stress three really basic rules of firearm safety, and we call them the always rules. Always point the firearm in a safe direction. Always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And always keep the firearm unloaded until it's ready for use. Well, you can break the second one and the third one if you're really careful about the first one. Uh, if you're not, uh, you can shoot your TV set. I like to tell the classes that when you hear that story, oh, I was cleaning my gun and it went off. Now, that's idiot speak for I was doing something stupid and pulled the trigger and fired my gun. It's going to be interesting to see how things play out with that really unfortunate incident on a movie set involving Alex Baldwin. And I'm not going to go into that. Uh, there's a lot of things we don't know about what happened. But obviously, some of those rules were broken. And the firearm was not thoroughly checked before it was handled by the, by the actor. So once again, uh, be safe. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with a firearm that's handed to you, you should make sure that the person who's giving it to you opens it up. And if he doesn't or she doesn't know how to do that and you don't know how to do that, put the darn thing down until you have somebody who knows how to operate and make sure that that firearm is safe. And one resource, I have yet to run across any firearm for which there is not a YouTube video available to show how it works. So that's always, a, always an option. So. Anyway, I didn't mean to come off as real preachy, but because of the comments and some of the things that have been in the news lately, I felt it an appropriate time to, to give a little lecture on firearms safety. So thanks for watching. If you have comments or questions, uh, you can post those below, or you can give us a call at the museum. We're always glad to talk to you about firearms. Thanks for watching.